So here I've got a reminder to you of what real numbers really are. And essentially, real numbers are positive and negative numbers, but they can be any kind of number you can dream of. They can be these whole numbers, like positive 2, negative 3. They can be decimals, like these. Um, they can be infinite repeating uh, or non-repeating decimals, like pi, pi and negative pi. They can be fractions, negative fractions, 0, etc. So basically, a real number, anytime you see somebody talk about real numbers, it means any number you can dream of, positive, negative, or 0, including fractions and decimals, basically anything except an imaginary number, which we'll talk about later. Now also, in your study, you'll, you'll see this term called integer. And so we'll, I wanted to kind of introduce that here. Examples of integers are all the negative and positive numbers, and then also including zero, which is neither negative nor positive. But these are only the whole numbers, the negative or positive whole numbers, essentially. So negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It goes on to infinity in the positive direction and negative infinity in this direction. But basically, no decimals no fractions, uh, nothing like pi or anything like that. Basically these nice whole numbers but negative or positive. These are called integers. So we'll kind of start out by adding in, in, in these and we'll learn how to subtract them and so on. But these rules apply to any real numbers, any negative or positive decimals or fractions that you would have. All right, so the best way to do it is just to jump right into an example. What if we wanted to add the following numbers together? Negative 2 plus 0. Now I know that this is incredibly easy. You know the answer to this. In fact, anybody knows you add 0 and you don't really make any changes. So I know that you all know that negative 2 uh, is basically the answer. But here in algebra, we want to... Uh, we want to, to take baby steps. So we're going to use this idea of a number line here and kind of illustrate a few things. Uh, because as we get to more complicated problems, the, we'll need a number line here to, to help us. So here in the middle of the number line, right here, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and put the number 0 there to kind of tell you that this is the center of the number line, right? These numbers going this direction are positive, and, and this arrow means it goes off to positive infinity. And these numbers going this direction, these, the, this direction this way, is, uh, are negative numbers, and they're increasingly negative, more and more negative, and they go off to negative infinity this way. So the way that you use the number line to add is basically the very first number that you have, you have a first number and you're adding to it a second number. Here the first number is negative 2. So what you do is you start by putting a dot in the first location and then you add to it whatever you have here. Now when you add positive numbers you move to the right along the number line from your starting location and if you're adding negative numbers you move to the left. That's the only thing you have to remember because when you're adding a negative number you're going to learn here soon in algebra that when you're adding a negative number, it's just like subtraction. So you're getting lower, lower, lower. Remember, these are increasingly negative, which are lower and lower and lower numbers. More and more uh, down into the hole, below sea level, so to speak, this direction. Anything this direction is increasing. So when you add positive numbers, you go this way. And when you add negative numbers, you're going to go to the left. But in this case, we're actually adding 0. So we don't go this way or this way. We just stay in the one spot. And so the answer is negative 2 because we didn't really move. So this, this, this particular example was extremely simple. That's OK. You have to start somewhere. So let's go ahead and do another one. Let's do one a little more uh, challenging. Let's say, what if we had negative 6 and we wanted to add to it the number 6? Now, a lot of you looking at this could just tell me what the answer is, but you know, we want to show you how to do it on a number line. So we'll drag a num another number line down here and we'll see if we can figure it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first number that we have and we're going to plot that on the number line. So we'll go over here and find it. It's right here, negative 6. That's the first number that we have. Um, and then f to that negative 6, we are going to do what? We're adding positive 6. So that means we move 6 units to the right. Okay? So we'll start here and we will count 6 units from this starting location. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Look where we ended up. We ended up at 0. So we started over here and we went to the right because we were adding a positive number and we ended up here at 0. And that answer, uh, in that case, means the answer to this is zero. So we use a number line here to give you some idea and to, 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 to uh, kind of introduce how we use a number line. But you should kind of uh, start to recognize that when you have a negative number and you're adding the same number but positive, they kind of annihilate each other and you're always going to get zero. So negative 6 plus 6 is always zero. Negative 17 plus 17 is always zero. Negative 27 
plus positive 27 is always going to give you zero. And you can see how visually on the number line, you'll always start at that negative number and then you'll move to the right the same number of units, so you'll always end up on zero. And so that's how you would use a number line to solve that problem. All right, so let's do a, a one that's a little bit different. Let's go in here and go over here and say, what if we're trying to take the number negative four and add to it the number negative eight? Now here's where we start to get uh, into, you know, students might look at this and not know exactly how to handle it. That's okay, that's why we're gonna use a number line. So we're going to drag this number line down here, all right? And we'll make it a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to read. All right, and then what we will do is we will start with the very first number that, we're at, that we have in the problem, negative four, and we'll find that on the number line. That's right here, we put a dot here. That's our starting position, that's negative four. And then we're adding to it a negative number. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start at this location and we're going to go to the left. How many units? Eight units. The negative sign means we're going to the left this way. We're going to go eight units. Now we're going to actually run out of numbers here, so we'll have to extend our number line. Sometimes you have to do that. That's okay. So let's just start counting. Eight units to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have seven and eight. So just to make it absolutely clear what we're doing, this one would be negative 11, and this one where we ended up is negative 12. So that actually is the answer, is going to be negative 12. So wherever you land at the end of the day is where your answer is. So again, I'm going to teach you the rules of addition in, um, in algebra for negative and positive numbers, so you do not have to use this number line all the time, but we still have, find a great importance in learning that you start in the first location, and we're moving left eight units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that ending position is what the, the result of the problem is when you add these numbers together. All right, so we're going to do one more problem here, and before I do that, let me go ahead and grab another, num another number line here. I'll, I'll kind of drag it to the bottom here. And then we'll shift things up just to give us a little bit more space. And then I'll grab this number line here. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And then we're going to blow your mind with this incredibly difficult problem, which is going to be 3 plus 4. Now, I, all, I know that you all know the answer to that is 7 because you can all add. But let's do it as we have learned to use a number line here. We look at the first number, which is the number 3. And we find positive 3 on here, which is right here. And then we are going to add to it positive 4, which means we move to the right 4 units. So we start here. We go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is where we land. This is the final position, the number 7. And that's why the number 7 is the final answer there. So here now you, you, you have the basic idea of how you add negative and positive numbers together. You just start at the first location. If you're adding a positive number, you move to the right that many units. And if you go, are adding a ne negative number, you move to the left that many units. Follow me on to the next section. We'll get some additional practice with this. And then eventually we'll drop the training wheels and you won't need the number line anymore to solve these problems. But for right now, we're going to get practice using it. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.